Hey everybody, happy Sunday. Welcome to Etc. Live. I'm your host, Kelly Barrett. I am super excited tonight. Um, I have two members. Uh, we originally started with four, but uh, <laughs> but life came life came up and that's all good. Uh, so we have Mark and Mike from Tees in the house. Hi, gentlemen. Hello. How are you? Hello, Kelly. What's going Hi, on? <laughs> you the bomb. I love you, Kelly. You right just on. me right up. I love you too. I think, uh, thank you guys for coming. You know, I got to say this. It was so cool to meet you guys a little over a month ago in Edmonton. Yeah, it was great and, to meet you. That was yeah. Uh, that was a nice surprise. Did yeah, you know well, who we were? I did know, and here I did know who you were. And here's the funny thing. Here's the funny thing. So my friend Claudia Santiago and I were hanging out in the lounge because I had a meeting with Richard Lancate from April Wine. So it's not, <coughs> just to clarify, we weren't just lurking around the bands. And. Uh, and we knew that you guys were there, but you guys had just finished eating and, and my friend Claudia, and I just don't, I didn't want to like be that girl. And my friend Claudia is like, no, they're, we'll wait till they're done eating. And then she walked over and cause she's brave. And, and then the next thing I know, you guys were waving me to come on over and yeah, yeah. we sat and had a chat and you guys were super friendly and super awesome. And we hung out for a bit. And, and so I'm really glad that happened. And I think that you guys were one of the only bands that ended up playing that Sunday evening, wasn't it? Yeah. It was us and Streetheart. Uh, doing the um the acoustic thing right right because after the rains came right nobody knew what to do nobody knew what the next what the next move was going to be we didn't know i mean but um the promoters were, were fast on their feet and they put everybody across the street into the uh the rogers place and then um <laughs> and then came up with this idea to do a <laughs> acoustic Tease thing. unplugged wow <laughs> who, who ever thought <laughs> One of us. You know, I, yeah. I I love the way everybody just kind of did what they had to do or could do, and I know April Wine went and hung out with their fans and did meet and greets and and whatnot. So, yeah, that's the Canadian spirit, right? The show must go on one way or the other. Mike, we Mike, were. Mike, and I talked a little bit after that, and I was kind of sad that we didn't end up doing the whole show unplugged because we were kind of freaked out that it was unplugged. You know, we've never done that, and right. of course, we no. take like our hardest production song, "Heartless World," and we decide to do it, and it turned out pretty good. Well, so, now I, so now I regret not doing the whole show, just bang, 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 bang. But uh, just, it was cool. But it, yeah, was, it was. Right, it was well, I, well, it was literally getting dangerous because when I saw them squeegeeing the stage off, I was like, oh, that, just, that can't be safe. Oh, no, I didn't want to go anywhere. I was ready. I was ready to be electrocuted. I've been waiting 42 years to get back there. Okay. <laughs> Let's go. Yeah, but, we, need to, we need to make that one up, though. That That's, you know. That's one we want to we want to, we got to get back there and, and actually finish that set. <laughs> Absolutely, yeah. Well, you guys are definitely making up for some lost time, and and you just came from a very cool and exotic location. I'll let you tell the viewers about that. Oh yeah, we were just in Sweden. We just did a, a festival called Time to Rock in Sweden. It goes. You're right. The, the nonchalance of your voice when you're and saying we were in that, right? Sweden, like, yeah, man. We were just like in Sweden. You know, as, as you do, <laughs> as you as you go to, you know. <laughs> See, uh, of the three people I see on the screen, one of us clearly doesn't need a microphone. Marco, you're so loud. <laughs> Am I? Okay, I'll back this up. <laughs> you can't. It doesn't matter. Your voice no, is. What, what is that? What is that? What is what? You hear that? <laughs> that sound. That right there? That might right, be right there. Do, might, that be right my, there. might be my dog, Emmett, trying to get outside. No, it's a, uh, it's a microphone issue. Oh. Well, I'm deaf, so I don't That's matter. It. Can you? Not me. I don't think. No, I think it's coming from. Hey. hey. I think it's coming from where? I, I think it's coming from a mic for sure. I'm just wondering. Uh, oh, we're, you know what? We're getting a ton of comments in already. So I'm going to just address a few of those. And I'm going to ask somebody at home if you could let me know if you guys can, can hear that. I do hear it. Uh, I know we do. I'm not sure if they do. Um, but anywho. Doug Corby saying hello. Hey, Doug. Timothy Koyak. Tease was beyond amazing in Edmonton that day. He's saying. Wow. <laughs> awesome. Did uh, he see? Did he see both are shows? You still getting... <laughs> yeah, we're are still we, getting it. We... Let's okay, just move yeah. on. Did it go away for a second? Yeah, it's no. not there right now. It's not there now. No, it is there right now. Really, really badly. People are commenting. Okay, I'm gonna so... unplug. I'm gonna, I'm gonna unplug my mic and see if it's me. Okay. Okay. We'll get this figured out, guys. It's not a show if technology isn't running amok. <laughs> A 
Ed Show says it sounds like a new tune from Techno Verbal. <laughs> Smart ass for this, this is like the Edmonton gig all over again. <laughs> Look, we just, just... You know what? You know what? You know what I think we should do? Just because this interview is really important to me, and I can tell by the amount of comments, it's super important to the viewers. I think we should log out and fix this problem and come back in five minutes. Is, did, that's did, what I think did, did it go away when I just unplugged? No. Oh, okay. me. I'll unplug. There we go. It's gone. But now we can't hear you. <laughs> We can't hear you now, Mark. Okay. That's not a particularly bad thing. There we go. No, now we can hear you and we can hear that other sound. How about now? Yeah, I hear you now. We hear you now and the other sound yeah. is gone. Yay, we're in business. Never mind everybody, we're not going anywhere. We're sticking around. <laughs> Yeah, Marco, you ruin everything. I always just technology in the pond, man. Forget it. I just, I just can't. <laughs> oh, I'm thinking I'm hearing it again. I'm not. Uh, we can't hear it out here, so we're all so good. We're good to go. Okay. Thanks for the funny and smart ass comic relief, Ed Show. Sounds like a YouTube from Techno Garble. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> uh, hey, Todd Cook, good to see you, buddy. Uh, James Baudry music. James Baudry. Actually, I met James for the first time at your show in Edmonton. Where are you wow. seeing all this stuff, Kelly? Can we see uh, comments on the side? Ah, okay. Let's see and uh, James is saying hello, beautiful people. Oh, oh, do you know, <laughs> do you know Calvin Hood, Mark? Yeah, we sure do. Calvin he's Hood, because yeah. yeah. you know what he's saying? Marco always is the troublemaker. <laughs> Ooh, <burn. laughs> Calvin, Calvin is the guy that's actually responsible in 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 getting the group back together. As a, as a so? fan, yeah, as a fan, he reached out to me, and uh, and reached out to Brian, and got us all speaking again about the possibility, and that's how that happened. Is that right? And Coach mm -hmm. had a good analogy of it, or something. He says he just walked by and s switched the light from off to on, and we were back together, or something wow. like that. I well, Calvin, remember. on behalf of all the fans and everybody watching tonight, thank you for that. Wow, that's, we're, wow. I'm getting some comments. Unbelievable. Okay, he's allowed to take the shot because you know he's. Well, you see him come. I don't got no comments. <laughs> yeah, on the side, Marco. Let's see where it says comments and, on the side of your screen there. Oh, okay. And uh, Derek Spear, hi, <laughs> yeah. you, buddy. He's saying. Hello from Niagara Falls. We're so behave so so yourselves. <laughs> Marco, back up. We're away from the mic. You're blowing your mic up. Okay, I can't help it. No, no you can't. I, I gotta have like I gotta use like my Barry White voice. Yeah, okay. Yeah, how was that? Is that okay, guys? Okay. So that let's mellow get, enough let's, for you? Let's yeah. get back to the Sweden. But tell us about Sweden. Go ahead, Marco. Sweden. What? <laughs> I the sounded too nonchalant, here, apparently. <laughs> <laughs> no, it was me that was nonchalant. Uh, Sweden was fabulous, Kelly. Wow. Um, I was surprised that, you know, you couldn't, I couldn't walk like 10 feet on the, on the, on the grounds where the concerts were, on the, where the stages were, and people would stop you and be so nice. And they were just from all over the world and saying, oh, they've been waiting all these years to, to see T's. It just blew me I was blown away. In fact, oh, sure. uh, yeah. And uh, somebody came as far as South America and ended up uh, making a trip to Sweden just so they could see teas. And I'm, I just, hard to hard to wrap your head around that. I would never have expected that kind of uh, reception. But, and the people, fabulous. Country, beautiful. I was just, wow. you people, know. People were amazing. Really, Is that really right? And how long were you there for? So not just a weekend. Is we that right? played, yeah, we did one. We did our set, but we um, we got there Friday, and we played Saturday, and we stayed Sunday, and it was great. Just the experience of just being around those people and stuff like that. This festival was really, really cool. It wasn't giant. It wasn't massive or anything like that. So everybody was moving around comfortably. The bands were amazing. A lot of European bands that I never heard of who were just unbelievable. Is and, that right? Uh, yeah. Oh yeah, and and. Um, and I did like our Marcus said, just the reception we got. I mean, we didn't expect that. We 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 knew we had, you know, some interest here and there. Yeah. But um, yeah, people showing up with stacks of albums signed and stuff like that, and you know, just we never been to Europe. That was the thing. We never got there. Really? In fact, no, we never played. We never we played Canada. We yeah. played. Uh, yeah, and that was about it. So to have that this many years later, 
you know, and just, it was, it was really, yeah, it was really sweet. That must have just been amazing. Yeah. And what, I mean, especially for the fact that you've never been to Europe and apparently you had all these fans. That you didn't know yeah. But you know what else I found talking to people there, they, they're big on Canadian bands in general. They were Sorry. asking, they were asking me about some bands that I would not expect them to know. Right. Like, um, one guy was asking me, he said, I love this band called Rabbit. Remember Rabbit? There was a band called Rabbit, W R A B I T. Oh, right, right. They were a heavier band, right? Yeah. Like, yeah, but yeah, this, yeah. This guy is asking me about Rabbit. See, you think they'll get really? back together? <laughs> I said, well, we, we, we did. Why not? Why not? So we'll yeah. put in a good word if we ever find it, right? <laughs> But, <laughs> right on, the Europeans dig in Canadian music as they and, should, and they would as like they, to, they would like to see a lot of these other groups get over there. They 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 really they really are hot for Canadian bands. Really Is that right, eh? Yeah. You know what, you guys? I have something really bizarre to tell you. You know who's in the comments right now? Brian. No. <laughs> 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 well, what's he got? So yeah, well. We'll take a comment from Brian. Yeah, there well, you Brian, go. Brian says hello, guys. It's Brian D. <laughs> I wish I was with you guys. <laughs> you guys That's are good. funny. Wish I was on with you guys. Oh, That's yeah, fantastic. We do too, and, Brian. And why aren't you, Brian? <laughs> we are technologically super challenged. Brian, just, okay. so you, just so you know, Brian, you can still come into the studio anytime and we'd love to have you. So if, if you can get in, come on Derek. in. The door's open. Yeah, Derek <laughs> I just thought that, was, yeah. that was kind of bizarre. Yeah, Derek Spear. Your story's not finished. My man Rico. Rico. Okay. You don't know Rico, Marco. Hey, Rico. Uh, Brian's saying, Marco, you look like an airline pilot. Oh, <laughs> right on. Wow. Oh, you, another good, really good That's friend of mine. Is a lot of thunder just by texting. Look. Actually, uh, Jason Cran is in the house, too. He's saying, Mike and Mark, ah. tease, tease. Love you guys. Hope to see you again oh, soon. Okay. You guys Jason. are killing it. Keep rolling. We love Jason, don't we? We do. Absolutely. We were talking about Europe, but Canada, the same thing. I'm just, you know, it's been so long and, and, you know, and we weren't around very long when we actually were. Right. And, uh, yeah, it's, 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 it's hard to, it's, yeah, like I said, it's hard to wrap your head around it, that people are just so receptive and they remember and we're surprised man. you know, yeah, you have to that's good thinking. stuff. Good yeah. stuff. And, you know, while we're on that topic, can I ask, you know, it's an obvious question. And it's good to come up because I've already been asked this to ask you guys. So, so obviously the question is what, what was, what, why was the reason that you guys parted ways? If that's okay, if I ask. Oh, Brian, absolutely. can you text in that answer? <laughs> <laughs> right no. <on>. Love it. <laughs> uh, it's wow. It all happened. You know, we worked, we worked a number of years and we finally got to this position and it seemed like everything we worked for, you know, there's a lot involved in music. You know, there's talent and there's, and there's luck and there's timing and there's right. management. And there's so many aspects that got to come together in order for a band to, to finally, uh, you know, go over that last hump. And we were at that last hump and a few things happened. And the house of cards just started falling, it seemed like, you know, it's hard to remember now. It's a long time ago. Right. But it seemed well, like, not go ahead, Mike. Well, I think, okay, well, it came down to um, we did our our last record, Body Shots, and uh, it didn't and it wasn't really, didn't really do much for us, right? And at that point, we... Yeah, but there's a lot of philosophy behind that, that you just can't say it didn't do much. Philosophy. You know? <laughs> well, whatever, <laughs> like, you know, the... Re the philosophy? Re <laughs> 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 That's where I go for my philosophy, Kelly. I go to Mark Braddock. You want some philosophy? There's where you go. Well, I just so hey, I'll just sit back. You do take over, Plato. Go ahead. <laughs> Sorry, Mike. Go ahead. Please, That's please. funny. <laughs> philosophy. philosophy. Oh, yeah, on, Spell it. Spell philosophy. F-I-L. F-U-L-L. Damn, Damn it. He got it right. He got it right. <laughs> Made a fool of me. Anyway, no. Okay, so there's all other stuff. Yeah. Basically, let's just say we came to a point where, for Brian, he had, he, he had enough. He just didn't want to do it anymore. He, he, was, uh, he, couldn't, he couldn't really... Um, we, he was we disillusioned by the business? Is that well, fair I to think. say? Yeah, I think so. I think so. I think it just wasn't making sense. Here we were slugging away and we were doing as, as a live act, we were doing really well. We were going, we we're getting all the prime opening gigs and all this stuff and we we're doing that stuff and we we're doing really well. And it's kind of hard to, um, to make sense of doing really well in an 
like a Montreal form or something like that, killing it, killing it, killing it. And you're not seeing any money. You're not seeing any, Absolutely. any, any returns. Right. Right. But understanding, like you have to understand that that's just part of the game. You just got to slug and slug and slug. One day you get there and, and things start rolling in. That's just the business. Right. And I think it was just, it's just, was really starting to grind on, on Brian, especially. And he just really, he needed to, he needed to, uh, to get out. He just didn't want to do it. Right. So, Interestingly enough, I'm just going to stop you for a second here before I lose these comments. And actually, Brian is actually chiming in on what you're saying. And and uh, basically what he said, he loves the band, but the industry got to me. But I love being with the guys. And then he just typed in and said, well said, Mike. So well, you're thank so you, thank you, Brian, for for okay. reaffirming that. Yeah. So you hit that on the head. So, yeah, I think that's and then and when you lose your singer, then where do you go? So I mean, yeah, we, you can be the toughest. Member but there was there was a whole set of circumstances probably that that started snowballing before Brian made that decision. You know, we right. had lost our worldwide deal with Capital because of that Body Shots record, and and there was just so many things we could talk about all night about you know what really right. happened. So, so, like I said, a bunch of things, a bunch of things happened, and then collectively the ball started industry. rolling, and then when Brian made that decision yeah that was uh how, how do you replace brian yeah and, and we we couldn't even consider it i mean yeah i remember going in the office and they were they were talking uh so who you want to get and i said well, we can't think of anybody we're going to get somebody that that well they they were really, really offering either everybody was kind of deflated at the same time which is another another you know See, reason for what had happened right everybody yeah. had worked so hard including management record and we all truly believed that we were going to get there and then all of a sudden we were all faced with the fact that we're almost starting over you know and uh and they yeah. just kind of they they i think they were at a loss for words too and they did offer jimmy clench up that was the only guy they really did offer up from april right. wine and bto and, and i don't know we were you know, we were kind of numb from the whole thing, Mike and I and Chuck. Yeah. And uh, we, we, we were always yeah, a band. We, did, we grew up we as a we band. Did. We were friends. You know, yeah. and that's... and. Uh, I think we all need to step away at that time, right? Right. Not realizing we could never step back. <laughs> because, <laughs> <laughs> that, you know, we'll give it... We we'll give it six months. We'll come back. We'll just pick up where we left off. Right? No, no. We got sucked into some hole. I mean, we weren't seen for forty years. You know, and, and it's you know, and I can understand everything that you guys are saying because, it, for starters, the industry is fickle for sure. And back then, well, that was that was happening for a lot of people. And Barb Cook Corkum just said that you and and it's funny she should comment this because I was thinking this today when I was doing my homework. She said that you guys were way before your time, and that's and I find that interesting that Barb would say that because. I was listening to a lot of the older older stuff today and I thought these guys were like like ahead of their time like in in kind of and I don't want to compare you well, I don't, to I don't, I don't think you're ahead of our time. A, but you had a sound you had a sound that was ahead of your time I don't I don't know I don't know any other way to know. say it but I was thinking that god they're almost like, like you almost had like a sticks wall of sound going on when a lot of other bands didn't have that and I'm not saying that I'm not comparing you to sticks but I'm saying in that like there, it was just a lot going on, perfectly synced, and it was just a wall of sound. Like it, you didn't hear a lot of that back well, then. I think I don't know. I just I think the bass, guitar, drums lineup never really goes out of fashion. I think I think it ages right. well. There's, yeah. There was there wasn't really any um, um, particular sounds of the time. You know what I mean? Like in the '80s, you had Simmons drums. You know, pew, pew. Right. <laughs> yeah. you yeah. had all those sounds that that that. You can you can start to key in on on that time from listening to those records. I think with us, I think where it feels into like uh, like Bad Company, a group like Bad Company could probably come out today, and they just just guitar, bass, and drums. And it's, you right, know, I yeah. think, straight I think up rock and roll. Yeah, I think it sort of age as well. So I think that that's in our favor. I don't know if we were ahead of our time. I don't think I think we were probably actually behind our time. <laughs> that was the problem. Yeah, maybe ahead of your time, but I, but you were doing something really uniquely awesome that not a lot of a other bands had that sound is what I'm trying to say. I just find it strange that someone else would, would comment well, on something I was kind of thinking today. Well, we certainly weren't, we certainly weren't um, getting the airplay. So, I mean, we, we, you know, it's not like we were catering to a particular sound, the radio sound. We're trying to, we were trying to get on radio, but I don't think it wasn't really working. So I think we just kind of, we're being what we were. That's basically the best way I can say. It. We just were true to ourselves and hope, hope that we would, we would get some uh, radio action. Right. Which right. we did on, but on a very sweet misery. Scale. Sweet misery was a great and tune. That like, was, that's still a great tune. But that's a complete oddball in, in our catalog, right? Well, I was going to ask you about that. 
because yeah. that was you know that was a, a big hit for you guys and yet i've i've kind of I'm, my understanding is that there's some theories that maybe it was the best thing and maybe it wasn't the best thing for you guys because it was so far removed well yeah what yeah, you normally would, did yeah i would say it was it was the greatest thing as far as um but well, it, it kept us in the game for sure yeah. because it did get a lot of airplay in canada and uh but it just it was in um in our 45 minute set opening set it was really you know, it, it wasn't just, it didn't fit in. So we, we weren't even doing our, our only hit live. We, did, <laughs> we didn't play it. I refused to. I always said, we can't do it because it's just, it's killing the set, right? But we probably should have looking back, but you know, that was just uh, young and stubborn, I think, you know? Yeah. Uh, no. But uh, we're doing it now. <laughs> yeah, I bet, eh? And I, I love that song. And I, you know, I've, I've listened to it a few times this week and it just, it just gives me that warm feeling like it takes you back to a simpler time. Yeah. I just love it. It's such you a well to say, Yeah, you never want to say no to airplay. You never want to say well, no to success, right? But, uh, Chuck Price was a big Furlan Husky fan. <laughs> <laughs> Brian has a comment. He's saying we're oh. older now and we're more seasoned and life hasn't shown and life has shown what's really important. Well, the funny thing yeah. is just a number. I agree. Age is just a number. I, Back I at uh, we were talking about ahead of very our very high number right now, a very high number. <laughs> but you know what? It's better than the alternative. Whenever you're kind of cranky about getting old, always remind yourself it's better than the alternative. You know, Kelly, when we did our first record, when we did our first record, it was we were greenhorns, man. We just, you know, somebody said, "You got any songs?" And we said, "Yeah, we got some songs." And we didn't have any songs, so we just started writing songs. So I think the progression of the four studio records, four studio albums kind of we were growing you know and we we were just hitting our stride when we broke up probably body shots was you know our writing was always getting consistently better so right. when people we, say we were really yeah we were really learning on on the job we really were to be um, to be honest we we bluffed our way into the business and we just managed to keep talking <laughs> <laughs> we, just, we just okay what do you want want us to dance we'll dance for you. <laughs> We'll do it. What do you need? Yeah, what do you need? Someone. You know, you want us to put away the chairs at the end of the show? We'll, yeah, do, we'll that. do that. We'll do anything you like, you know? Just don't send us home. Don't send us back home. And that's all. Right. You know, and speaking of albums, and I, I'm almost thinking we should ask the question before probably me blows the answer, because that would be just like me. So maybe we'll get to that. Um, but first, I just want to give a huge shout out to my show sponsors, my official etc. show sponsors, Writers and Rockers Coffee Company. So, and tonight's feature coffee is the Lee Aaron Body Rock. Have you guys heard of this? I've heard of this coffee, heard, right? yeah. yeah. Yeah, so it's uh, it's a, a writer who's a big fan mm. of music, and so now he's getting all these Canadian music oh, that's uh, cool. rock stars to endorse their own coffee. And I chose wow. Lee Aaron because it's Lee Aaron's birthday yesterday, so happy birthday, Lee Aaron. We have a... Uh, um, happy birthday, then, Lee. Yeah. We have an endorsement deal with cat food. Really? <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> I never know when you guys are going to pull up my layer. <laughs> yeah. Am I earning my bond tonight or what? Is that for real? For real? No, it's not for real. No, <laughs> of course not. <laughs> oh, Thank you. Good it. night, everybody. <laughs> I can't believe I fell for that. <laughs> I said it pretty seriously. I said it with a straight defense, face. Yeah, in my defense, it's 36 degrees here, That's and a... I think I got a tad bit of heat stroke this afternoon. Wow. That's good. Is it hot like that every day? No, just, not normally. No, it's just this week we're in the middle of a heat wave, and so yeah. How long has it been? A week? A week, yeah. Wow. And all next week too. Yeah, thirty-eight. There's some thirty-eight degree temperatures, and it's crazy, crazy everywhere right now, isn't it? Yeah, crazy yeah, everywhere. <laughs> Pardon me. So let's get to the question. Okay. Uh, so we're going to ask a question, and this is for four free tickets for, and you got to be local to win these tickets. Or you have to know somebody local to give them to you, I guess, if you win. Uh, so it's four free tickets to Good Times Comedy Club Lethbridge, which is a super funky little comedy club in town here. They get great yuck yucks comedians, big name comedians. It's it's a super fun night out. I go there all the time, actually. Cool. Yeah. So I think Mike, we're gonna let we're gonna let you ask the question. Oh man. If you remember it. Yeah, okay. Um <laughs> <laughs> no. I don't want to say it. I'm gonna say it, I'm gonna give it away. That's the problem. Um <laughs> okay 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 we did a live album right so far so good yeah but we don't did... say any more don't say any more about that though oh no we did a live album and the question yeah. is what was the title of the album yes and where was it recorded perfect well done uh -huh. well done, I don't, I don't, 
<laughs> Michael, shut, shut up. <laughs> you don't even remember. <laughs> uh, uh, and while we wait for some answers to come in, Timothy Koyak is asking, is Chuck still playing? Uh, I don't think so. I don't think he is. Oh, okay. um, like he might. Well, I haven't, I haven't heard anything. Um, well, we'll see if someone Chuck else is talking him. about, right? Chuck Price. Yeah, I, I would I imagine that's so. what he, he, Well, he, he did yeah. the he did the he did our first uh, when we got back together. He did it came up and did did a few songs with us at the uh, Resurrection uh, concert in Windsor. Right. Yeah, and then he came back and did the second one. We did we did another yeah. one in in uh, and he always will when we play close to home. We'll have Chuck come up, but yeah, uh, he wasn't interested in doing doing the whole thing and uh, going turn, up. Yeah. So fair enough. So we got uh, Chuck Lambert who's not here. <laughs> Better things couldn't, to do. <laughs> couldn't, yeah, I think he. I think he said, "I'd like to make it, but you know, the Barbie movie." <laughs> I got dissed. I got dissed for the Barbie movie. <laughs> yeah, no, I'm not. I'm kidding. No, I'm not kidding. No, he's, he, I think he's got a gig tonight. I think he's got a gig. Okay, we we can live with that. I would I would have to go hang myself yeah, in the backyard. See. Just correct me if I'm wrong. Is is an all you can eat pasta dinner considered a gig? Because I think that's <laughs> Dinner and a movie, right? I think so. I think <laughs> like the Boston Barbie. I don't know. Pretty hard to compete with. That. Unbelievable. Hey, do you guys know Mark Caruso? Yeah, I sure yeah, do. He's a man. He's, he's saying hello. Hi, Michael. Uh, Curtis yep. Vasselmack. Do you know Curtis Vasselmack? Curtis. He is a local. Oh. He's local. Super talented Curtis, metal no. musician. Uh, he's like, hey guys, awesome to see you on here. Hey, uh, thanks, Curtis man. plays with the Tyrants of Chaos, who many of my viewers know because I'm always. What? Posting their stuff, Tyrants of Chaos. Yeah, that's the greatest name I've heard. Isn't and they are just amazing. They are. Uh, look at Lisa, amazing. Lisa, Marco. Where are you seeing all this stuff? Oh, here we go. No, I didn't scroll. I didn't scroll. Take it. Where are you seeing all this stuff? No, I, I got the comments, but I didn't see Le like Lisa or, you know. Okay. Um. So so Ken Holst from Spider Entertainment Group. So uh, Ken from Spider Entertainment is the guy that's putting on the big corn fest, uh, corn stock, pardon me, in Tabor. Oh yeah, this whole weekend with uh, Harlequin in Toronto and Prism nice. and Honeymoon Suite. Yeah, it's going to be a big deal. He's saying, "I love that you guys could talk about the past and be honest, but it's even better that you didn't let it stop you from being who you really are." Oh, what a nice. Uh, uh, bad news, Spider Entertainment Group. We're lying about everything. <laughs> <laughs> You believe in any of this crap? Come on now. See what I'm doing? You do. You never Come know on. if they're in your leg or not. You gotta, be, are, like, you gotta be on your toast interview. You these guys. are well rehearsed lies. We've been sitting around all afternoon. So, okay, Mark, and then you say this about how we broke up, and then and then, then, and then let's that. pretend that we like each other, and then let's say we're still yeah. friends. And yeah, exactly. <laughs> don't mention the crack habit. <laughs> well, not yet. Okay. <laughs> that's what's beneficial. That's end of the show. Wow, this is right? nice. These comments are. Yeah, that's. I didn't really expect we were going to get very many comments. To be oh honest. no, I knew a lot of people were going to be popping in. Oh, Lisa Guliak. That's there she is. Yes, we love Lisa, Lisa Guliak. We love of Lisa. For those of you who don't know, and most of you should if you watch this show, Lisa is the premier photographer hands down. Yes, absolutely. Lady, lovely lady. Uh, she says hi, guy. Hope everyone is doing well. Yeah, we yeah. are. Love Hi, Lisa. Lisa. Yeah, she, her. her photos are phenomenal. I mean, she's just amazing. She's got such an eye for, and I'm awesome. and I I'm grateful because she she gives me pictures. She lends me her stunning photographs to use for promo shots for the show. So she gets she gets so. this good stuff. And she's recently retired from her uh, from her day teaching. gig. And uh, I told her, yeah, just go for it. Right, go with photography. Yeah. She's so. yeah. She's she's great at it, and everybody loves her. And I thought that was her. her day day. I thought that's. I thought she was a full time. No, she was a teacher. Or yeah. yeah. Well, she is a teacher. She just uh, she just uh, finished up. Wow. Yeah, she just packed that in. So go go, Lisa. Cool. We're all rooting for you. Like just yeah, Absolutely. take photography and run with it. I always write her and just say, "You got this." Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Leave the rugrats to the other new teachers that. I don't have the patience for it. Still. Oh, rugrats! How does anybody <laughs> handle them rugrats Can today? Can you tell I'm childless? <laughs> I'm with you. <laughs> okay, wow. so uh, oh, okay, we have an answer here. Calvin Hood. He can't answer that question. Oh, he she can't can. answer that. Oh, yeah, no, he's it's he, he's like part of the family. He can't be answering the question and, it's and get the tickets. Barred. She only has it. 
part right. Oh, really? She's got the location, so, but not the name. Can you give her two tickets <laughs> instead of four? I don't think she lives here, but... <laughs> Oh, my sister's in the house. Hi, Leanne. She loves that song, too, actually. Uh, so it's always good to see her here. Uh, oh, my friend Maggie okay, Gillen. Oh, Hi, Maggie. We have a question here. So okay. Derek, Derek Spear wants to know, he says, you got to ask Marco about PA surfing. <laughs> PA, oh, PA surfing? I don't know what that is. PA surfing. That's what it says. Oh, the Aerosmith I'm show. That's what he's talking about. Yeah. No. Oh, were you yeah. PA surfing at the Aerosmith show? Yeah, in the old days, they didn't fly PAs. They used to put them on the stage, you know, and they used to be really, you know, mag big, and and they would go to almost to the top of the arena. So make a uh, long story short, Mike was doing a drum break. I looked to the side, and there's all these speakers, spare speakers that Aerosmith had just lying around in case they needed them, and they were piled up, and to me, they looked like a staircase to the top of the PA. Which that needed to be scaled, right? That's right. <laughs> Mark said, well, I didn't scaled. know that was going to happen at the time, but here I went. I strapped my guitar, I threw my guitar in the back, and I started scaling this thing. Ended up the top, and I looked down there, and I could see all the people like in the top uh, balconies of the uh, Montreal yeah. Forum, right. and I just started running towards them, and nobody knew where I was. Mike, at this point, and and, and our sound man and our light man were going, "Where the hell is Marco?" And uh, finally, they spotted me. I was running yeah. down the PA, which is about only 36 inches wide, not knowing it was on wheels. <laughs> <laughs> and I hit like the fourth stack. They seen me. All the lights went on. Boom. I went down on my knees. I played this solo. It was like unbelievable. And 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 I was, I was crapping my pants, man. I thought I was going to take out 500 people. And the PA is going like this. So... Lights go out, boom, it's done. I made it. I crawled back really, really slow to where I came from. I went down this imaginary staircase, and there was like 10 Aerosmith roadies holding the PA up with their backs. This thing was going. And, uh, yeah, that was uh, – I think it would have been wow. a tragedy. Just a tragedy. It, you know? That, I don't. I dream – I have uh, a post traumatic sense. stress about it. Sometimes <laughs> I dream about it. And think, I bet, right? Oh, yeah, I just – you just can't, you know, I can't. It, unbelievable. It was ridiculous. It was ridiculous. It was so. It was. So, <laughs> but we did it a lot. Nosebleeds weren't uh, something that didn't happen on stage. You know? <laughs> Whatever. We, we, we I mean, I didn't, I didn't even see him. I didn't even see him go up. I didn't. I didn't know what was going on. So we're doing this thing. Brian and I doing a drum thing, and Brian's doing a thing, and then. It's like, then, where's uh, Mark? <laughs> we come back into the song. Well, you know, bang, 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 into the song, and all of a sudden, that's out of my peripheral vision. I see all this light way up to the side and i look over and all these all the, the spotlights are trained at the top of the the pa so and there's there's a goofball <laughs> dancing around up there you know? <laughs> and uh, yeah that's awesome <laughs> that's a crowd pleaser hey eh? well and uh, it was it's, uh, that was something so <laughs> next night montreal next night was uh maple leaf gardens and oh. you know of course i'm not going to try that again it was it was totally uh <laughs> So I looked to the side, and they had it roped off, and there was like three guys sitting there with clubs, ready to, yeah, no. oh yeah, ready to give it to me. Like yeah. it was a very serious situation that okay. worked out good. Could you imagine me now at sixty-seven doing that? That'd okay. be fantastic. Three guys. And how, did, and, to... and how did that make you feel, Mark? I feel like a therapist right now. But how did that make you feel when you looked to the side and they were like prepared? I don't know. There was, something, there was something about this band that you're always trying to overachieve and always do better. Right. So What's no, the next day, thing? the next day I was trying to figure out how I can how I could top that, but you know, <laughs> first of all, never did. Clubs, three guys with What's clubs. Up, Mark off. I'm cool. There's a guy. Yeah, there are no clubs. I'm calling, no. a, I'm calling a penalty on that. Hold on. <laughs> calling a. Right, so throw, throwing, throwing the so flag what are the lies again? What are the, what the flag are the on that. Lies? He's throwing the flag. 15 yards for embellishment. Okay, okay. mag <laughs> flashlights. They had something. <laughs> you know, they were like they were like sitting there pissed they off. Had so scowls. Like, they had scowls on their faces. That's about it. <laughs> Looks well, of dismay. <laughs> clubs. Like they were gonna club the man. <laughs> oh, come on. Oh, well. <laughs> like seriously, if if you had acted irrationally or the shenanigans happened were they seriously thinking that they might club you i don't think that was a great time in the aerosmith uh camp and i think maybe everybody was a little uh on edge well, i can you know, tell the, you what happened for a fact it was 1979 and maybe the most tumultuous year for aerosmith 
right? Yeah, yeah, there's a lot of shenanigans going on. Yeah, in, in the and, uh, yeah, and, and nobody tries yeah. that shit, right? I mean, I probably all, I actually probably almost killed some people, and they were pissed. So yeah, I remember well, clubs. <laughs> but clubs, like I'm thinking, grow up, people, get a taser. <laughs> <laughs> but you know, I, I I love to embellish things, and 45 years later, you know, who can prove that I'm wrong? So yeah, right. clubs. Yeah. I can. <laughs> so I have a question I, I for you. There. Honestly, a couple of nine mils came out. The guy's sitting there like this. I've got a nine, nine mil. mil. That's a much better. That's a badass. <laughs> yeah. That's a badass. I didn't want to say the PG that. version and then the badass version. So question, question for you, and maybe Mike will ask you this. Uh, I'll get you to start the the way on this one. So we talked with, you know, you mentioned that Calvin, you know, was played a big part in, in you guys getting back together. And I'm wondering what, what was it? that was behind the band reuniting what was the deciding factor or what was behind that and thank god you did well Aside from calvin how did that happen well um i think i think marco was doing some recording in town here and he, he ran into brian and they got talking and i think you ended up inviting brian to record something with you right yeah marco? Yeah. Well, yeah, yeah. That that was probably one of the first things. That, I wrote a song for Brian, oh, nice. and, uh, and and it was my intention to try and uh, you know gain back his friendship oh, and, and, oh. and, and write together, and maybe uh, nothing says love like a song. Right? You write a song. I love that. I love that. No, seriously, well, on a serious note, I love that. Out of all, all out of all the four of us, I was the most adamant about not letting the band go ever in the, in all those forty years. So it was always in the back. And that, <laughs> do I have, to throw, I the, do that I have to throw the flag again? To... <laughs> Man, we didn't talk for like 25 of those years. No, I'm saying me. I know, you. but I, but I was always, you know, We're in the back of my mind. Don't rain on my Oprah moment here, Mike. <laughs> no, I'm still so touched by the fact that Mark wrote a song for Brian. Yeah. But, no. but, anyway, but so I, I, well, I could go the other way and say, yeah, I didn't speak to any of them for 25 years. And I was pissed. Off. But why do you want to take the negative aspect of, of something? Let's take the positive aspect, right? Well, I mean, heard, that it was I've always heard. in my heart that I wanted Tease to play together again. But I've heard you say many times, every day for 37 years, all I wanted to do was get this band back together. I just but I said it again. I just couldn't call them. <laughs> <laughs> That's just, the tough part, right? Just the part That's I, the could, tough I couldn't part, make right? contact with them. That was that was holding things up. <laughs> well, nobody was talking. You know, nobody. Yeah, well, I know. No, we didn't. No, nobody was talking. Have a lot of contact for for years, which um. The best well, we were living our life. lives, <laughs> and, and I was uh, was still you know chasing that dream, and and you guys all got real on me. <laughs> <laughs> okay, um, that, that question went a little sideways. <laughs> anyway, no, I'm getting back to it. <laughs> Here's a new question. Well, no, and I and I seriously wanted to ask this. What was it like that first time back on stage? Like, what did that feel like after so many years? Wow, it was well. Well, it's you're fantastic. You're, it was great, but it's not to me. It wasn't. Um, it wasn't comfortable because you know we hadn't played in so many years. I hadn't played. I hadn't played right. myself in, in 25 years. I didn't, didn't right. even look at music for 25 years. So getting back on, you're just sort sort of more the mechanics of it. You're worried about everything, about the monitors and all the, the, that sort of thing. So you're not really comfortable yet, where you for can sure. just enjoy the enjoy the thing. But it's still it, it still was enjoyable. But your your mind's going all the time. It's just this is this, this, and you're hoping everything goes right. But um, at the end of it, I mean, it was. What a great feeling that when it was all when it was all done that we pulled it off, which great. Was, that, that was that was the uh, the prize. I can imagine, yeah. And, and yeah. what's your take on that, Mark? Well, the question that came up was, who's going to come and see us? It's been forty three years. We were kind of nervous about, guess, yeah. you know, we practiced for quite a long time, and uh, and that was during the COVID. Was did COVID already come, or I guess no. no, no, it didn't. No, no. I think twenty nineteen is when we, you guys we were well, we we were well rehearsed. But uh, that was always the question, you know. I was kind of scared of would would people remember? Yeah, for and, sure. Uh, Fair enough. Yeah. But yeah. It, it was right. awesome. Yeah, it was, it was awesome. It was yeah. like uh, it was like riding a bike, man. I felt like I was uh, back where I belonged. Right on, and it probably didn't take long. I would imagine either. Like I, I could, I Mike, I can totally see 
I was on the road for 23 years and I know for myself, even when we took a couple of weeks off, it was always kind of, it always felt slightly foreign for like five minutes. Exactly. So, yeah. but I imagine, imagine it came back pretty quickly, eh? like that. that well, was, of... well, no, I mean, when, once we got in the rehearsal hall together and all of a sudden those, those, those dynamics start happening again, you know, the personal things and stuff like that. And it started feeling pretty comfortable, Right. but uh, it was just the playing part. It was just, you know, the getting, you know, can, for sure. Uh, do this again. Brushing yeah. the dust off. <laughs> and now it's. Well, uh, you didn't play for 25 years. I was playing the whole time. So it was kind of, you know, right. you know, it was great to be back with something that had substance, you know, because yeah. you're, you're always chasing, you know, you're doing a lot of gigs and you're playing and you're a musician and that's cool. But you're playing a lot of bars, you're playing other people's songs. Right. And you finally get to play your own songs again. And uh, yeah, yeah, it was, it was unbelievable. That's the thing. Yeah. That's the thing. Because you're, you're, okay, you've been away for 40 years. You're playing, you're playing forty-year-old songs that that weren't, you know, weren't huge in the first place. And so, you know, what do you expect? What's your expectations? You know, you got to keep those in check. But uh, wow, I mean, has it turned out so much, so much uh, better than we we could have hoped? You know, as far as people remembering and and stuff like that. Ah, so it's nice to know you. Uh, you know, we uh, left a little bit of a mark, I guess. Oh, apparently, apparently, yeah. Uh, Brian McIntyre is just commenting that they've his band. I'm assuming he's talking about has been doing an acoustic version of "Sweet Misery" for a long time, and it always goes over well. That's great. Wow. And people love that song, eh? So when, so I'm wondering, what was it like the first time? And I'll ask both of you this: What, what was it like the first time you heard that song on the radio? Oh, like, oh. Where, do you do you remember where you were when you heard it? And yeah. and were you probably Montreal, away? probably right. Montreal, because you know, that, that's where we were based at the time. We were living in Montreal. Um, and it was getting played all the time. It was getting played all the time. So yeah, but actually, the first time I ever heard um, our song on the radio was here in Windsor. It was oh, our very ready? our very first album, and uh, it's a song called "Boys Night Out," which is uh, and <laughs> and I think it only got played once. <laughs> on it was on uh, CKLW, which is a legendary station in in uh, in uh, radio. Uh, it was the one that broke. Guess who? Alice Cooper. Oh, was, cool. You've heard of Rosemary Trombley, probably, right? Right, yeah. She, yeah. Was, she was legendary program director. And I think she threw us a bone. I think uh, she she was, because I was coming back. I was coming back from, uh, <coughs> uh, wow, get a cough button. <laughs> <You know? laughs> um, I was coming back from somewhere late at night. It was like 1 o'clock, 1 30 in the morning, and I'm driving, and I just got a am radio in my car that's all i got so it's on cklw of course and i hear boys night up comes on in the middle of the night i hear our song for the first time i can't believe it i pulled the car over i was gonna say i get out of the car and I'm, i want to tell somebody there's nobody to tell just me and the radio <laughs> and i'm thinking if nobody heard this they're gonna think i'm lying <laughs> you know so i don't think they ever played it again but that was the first time the first time you hear that your song on the radio that's pretty pretty exciting you know i would imagine i would imagine yeah and and you know what it's it's surprising i ask this question quite often because i just think it's fun most of them say they were in a car and they heard it like they were in a car driving and, and they had to pull the car over i think that's where you hear <laughs> most of your music right For well years. back you know yeah. earlier you know yeah we didn't have our own youtube playlists and whatnot so yeah i listen to, i don't listen to the radio so much anymore well because i have my own playlists right right and it's all personal now you got your own you got your phone you got your music which is too bad because that sort of limits people from hearing new music yeah so much good stuff out there and we're never going to hear it unless we we search it out let's see plug in and search it out yeah mark yeah. How, would, how would you answer that question mark i don't know same thing i think it was in the car but i <laughs> of course it was <laughs> it, of course it was yeah yeah but that's funny but it was um, the songs that, it was the songs that were in the mix you know it was like at the time was uh i can't remember orleans and uh Boston had a more than a feeling. Oh, there was these was heavy stuff, tunes, yeah. man. Yeah, there was some great. Yeah. There was, yeah. Earlier on, we were talking about we had the big sound, but there was a lot of bands with that sound. And Boston was already there. Boston and, was you know, one, yeah. Foreigner sure. was already there. And, and and Sweet is much, you know, tease like. And uh, so there was a lot of bands that. Uh, but yeah, that's what our, my, that's my recollection in a car. And oh, yeah, just whatever, blown away. Yeah. Well, and, and so, and speaking of, of, you know, the radio and back in that time frame, who were you listening to back then? Like who were, uh, and I'll ask you, Mike and then Mark, who were some of your mentors or people oh. that you really aspired to sort of? What, just growing up? Just, um. Yeah, musically. Yes. 
Oh, well, for me, it was a lot of um, a lot of the Detroit bands that we grew up with, right? Um, MC5 and Alice Cooper and the Stooges and stuff like that. But we loved all the British bands, too. Of course, everybody yeah. loves the Beatles. Everybody loves the Stones, Zeppelin. Um, I love the Faces in particular. I was a big, big fan yeah. of Rod Stewart and the Faces. Humble Pie. Love Humble Pie. Really love 10 Years After. Yeah. Stuff like that. Um, I think I just, just loved it all, you know? I really did. I mean, it was... Uh, there it was, was so weird. much. There was, was so much. Weird. Sorry, Marco. There was so much back then. So much. <laughs> the bands weren't all the same, right? There was so many different. You could love. You could, you could love. Yes. You could love Cat Stevens. You Bowie. Could love, Bowie. Yeah, of course. Bowie, Mata Hoople, yeah. Queen. Oh, yeah. And we used to see them all coming through Detroit, and, so, and and so there was just so much, and you just, I just couldn't, I couldn't like just one thing. I just, I just right. kind of liked it so all. So much to be inspired by. Hey? To like, some degree, so yeah. Yeah, and then you, yeah, and then uh, yeah, and then I think. You just sort of form your own thing out of all those, all those ones, and then kind of find what you do best of all that, right? Right. And I think we were just like a hard rock band. We we uh, that that's what that's what we could do. So that that was our influence. For sure. The, the weird thing was being from Windsor, and uh, You're so you know, close just to literally it. driving two hundred and forty miles to Toronto or whatever it is, yeah. and seeing a whole new world that we weren't <laughs> yeah. even aware of. It, you know what, Canadian kind of, scene. That's true because we were not familiar with all the Canadian yeah. acts at the time. We we right. had no idea. We were really in a different world down here where we're, where we're at because we listened to the Detroit radio. We didn't have a, a good Canadian rock radio station to listen to that was that was playing. You know all the uh, all the big Canadian acts of the day. So until we got to Montreal, we were really unaware of a lot of them. You know. We, Uh oh, <laughs> he's frozen. <laughs> and so we um, we knew them. And then, then we got to when we got to Montreal, then we started realizing just what they meant. And then when we toured with them, we got to see firsthand just how massive they were in this country and what they meant to people. So it was an eye opener for us to to to, to, to learn about all these uh, these Canadian acts. Right. That's crazy. It is crazy when you think about it, like just and then I'll, and I'll ask you the same question, Mark. But, you know, it is crazy when you think of depending on what province you're from, your your musical yeah. experience growing up is totally different. Like I'm from Regina, so we were all, you yeah. know, street art and Queen City yeah. kids and that sort of stuff. The Northern Pikes. And if you lived in B.C., you were Prism. And you know what I mean? And very so, regional. Very yeah, regional. Very regional. Yeah. That's what I was trying to. Yeah, absolutely. And, and so, yeah. Mark, but you know, it's but you know what? It all changed with uh, much music, didn't it? When much music when much music came, then all of a sudden we had a national we had a national network and, and that was such oh I couldn't imagine what that was like for the acts, right? You know, one video getting spun on much music, that's that's gonna save you a lot of miles on the uh, on the van. <laughs> you know, for you sure, know, yeah. You know, that's that's that saves a lot of touring if you get a, a couple of hits on uh, on much music. But in our day, we 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 split up just before that whole thing happened. We we were pre video age. So yeah. uh, it was, uh, and same with street art. And I think street art probably bled into that age, but it was get, get in the car and drive and play, 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 play every place you can. I think that would have changed our fate too. If it, if it was two years later and MTV was out and, you know, we have no video on T's hardly. And yeah. uh, it, would, yeah. it would have changed our world very. It could have. Yeah. If we, if we probably could have hung on. I think you're right, Mark. Yeah. If we could have hung on a few more years, right? Because we were. You know the stuff we were doing, the heavy rock stuff. Obviously, of the late '70s, where it's kind of getting crushed by uh, soft rock, California rock, and disco, and all that stuff. You have to, you had to really be in the game hard to, to survive that. And so, if we could have weathered that storm and made it to the early '80s, you know, we might have been okay. Yeah. Another funny thing was when we did one night stands. It probably cost a couple hundred thousand dollars, and we went to go do body shots. The Knack had just came out with the My Sharon album and brought it home to Capitol for like eighteen thousand dollars, and this oh. is what these new wave bands were were doing, and, it, and that changed our world and, and how we were gonna, you know, produce our next record and the budget we had, and that really affected what had happened too. Yeah, but they, but, they brought the bar down a little bit by doing that. Well, they were just they were they were they were uh, bringing home hit songs for a lot less money, you know, right. and. and and, and before that, it was like the Queen thing, and everybody was paying three, four hundred thousand dollars to do a record, and they were giving points to these big producers like Roy Thomas Baker. Not that they didn't deserve it, but you know, and then the world all changed overnight yeah. with uh, yeah. with the police and the knack and the cars and Joe Jackson and the class. But it was 
yeah, and it was time for that. It was time for music yeah. to, to kind of freshen up again, right? So that, that stuff was all great. Loved all that stuff. I love but, all I mean, that stuff too, yeah. But I mean, it didn't slow down Triumph. It didn't slow down a lot of the the heavy acts, right? But you had to be well, at a certain you had to be at a certain level to to weather that storm, I think. But and then Brian was, and Brian was, made the decision, right? We probably would have weathered that storm. But when we, Brian well, it would have been a little tougher for us because we uh we, we hadn't well, really established ourselves. Not any our tougher stage. than it was for Triumph, you know. They just they were well, insistent on what they were gonna do. They kept plugging at Texas and you know well, they, 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 they were already well established by then. Yeah by, by the time we were done, yeah. Yeah, they were well established. Um yeah, but I mean, it didn't slow down some of those acts, but it did. It did get rid of a lot too, right? A lot of acts didn't survive the uh, the what we right. call new wave that that whole thing. But then a few years later, the, the hair metal thing happened, right? Yeah, and like, then the country thing hit. Do you guys remember that? I was just devastated. I think that was somewhere in the nineties. Like the country thing exploded. Well, yeah, I, like, oh I, did, I did the country thing, Kelly, in did nineteen eighty five, and, and my wife was signed out of Muscle Shoals, Alabama. And for a change, we were at the, we were before our time and we were taking all these approaches like in T's and, and in Motley Crue and we were bringing it to Nashville and it was, it was way too early, but yeah, I, I, uh, I was part of all that. It was it's crazy. Right, eh? Yeah. It's and just scared did. me. It's, it scared me because I was touring with a rock band and we lived on the road. And, and I remember the agent saying to us, you know, you guys, if you still want to live on the road, you're going to have to learn some country. It and, is, I, yeah. and I was like, I felt like hanging myself because I'm not a country, I'm not a country girl. I can, I, I, can, I can appreciate well done country music and there's a lot of fabulous artists out there, but I'm just, I'm a rock chick. Yeah. And so I remember being very afraid for my career and uh, it, as it turned out, we did have to, we did learn some country. Well, a lot like, of, the rock, a lot of right? the rock icons got older and they all what? moved to Nashville. And yeah, they, yeah, right? like, they, they created a whole new kind of, uh, you know. Go to Nashville and see Leon Russell or whoever you know sitting around and well, like that, like like I said with the country thing, that was the exact same thing with disco. I remember when disco happened. Oh, yeah. <laughs> and so, like, well, and the, yeah, I remember like locally here, all the all the clubs were going to disco, so all the yeah. live acts were getting pitched, and so all you had all these bands were freaking out. So what are we going to do? So a lot of them became disco bands, right? Because what are you going to do? Of, <laughs> that happens all the time in right? music. It's so, just you know. Yeah. If, yeah, it's where you are in the flow yeah, of things, uh, and if yeah. you're in the right spot at the right time with the right stuff, then you're going to go. And it, and and something like that could trip you up very easily. And how really? badly do you want? How badly do you want to continue playing? How badly do you want to do this? Right? Well, that's so, the thing, right? Did you want to? Are you going to you gonna prostitute yourself musically? Well, yeah. maybe, right? That's yeah. how we looked at it. It's like, <laughs> well, that's that's a, those are those are the real musicians, in my opinion, right? Those are the people that okay, if you go with the flow, and you're going to then you're a musician, and then you're, you you want to do that for a living. Yeah, I am not. I, I, <laughs> I am clearly not. I'm clearly not going with the flow. I can only. You know, I'm a one trick pony. I don't even do that trick very well, to be honest with you. No, so, that's not true. That's I, uh, not true. <laughs> so I mean, I'm kind Stop of. Uh, I'm kind of stuck in this little box, and I, you know, I can't really get out of that box. But I don't want really to get out of the box either. I like it. I like. I like the box. I'm you could get out of the box, but you're just warm and cozy in your box. Cozy. Yeah, exactly. My <laughs> cozy Kozak. <laughs> oh, here I was going to ask you about this. So, is it is it Brian that's the minister? Yeah, pastor. Pastor. Yeah. I'm sorry. Yeah. Uh, I, I thought it was him. And so, interesting factoid: I got a, a message from my cousin today who lives in Windsor. Um, her name is Tracy Tesselin, which probably uh -huh. Brian will know her. Anyway, she's my cousin, and Brian was her pastor. Oh, really? Wow. Yeah, what are yeah. the odds of that? <laughs> what a small world. Right, it is. Wow. And uh, so Brian was but he, but he was here. part of a big church, so. Uh, he probably knows who she is, I would I would. Oh, imagine. absolutely. Yeah, he uh, did that for, he did that that whole time for like 35 years. He was, uh, and he ran the youth ministry, and, and he was guiding kids, and uh, he was still playing wow. music and playing, you know, he became a guitar player. He didn't play bass, and you know, yeah. Well, wow, that's yeah. wild. Well, what did you all do during that break? Did you have wow. any? Exciting, did you have any exciting jobs? <laughs> well, I had the country thing for about ten years. Oh, so you continued yeah. playing, right? Yeah. yeah, and then I then I always had this pawn shop. You know that that was part of my life. It was a it was a junk store, really. Back, and I started working there at nine years old. And my dad would just go, you know, he was a putzer and. And he, he liked to hoard stuff, so he'd throw all this junk in the store and say, go to work. So, I, I you know, that was always my plan B if we weren't playing, if the music didn't happen. And then I ended up on the history television for uh, three years. 
on a on a pawn reality show across Canada, which was cool. Called Pond 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 Man. Yep. Yeah, hence the name Pond Man. So yeah, busy. Cool. Always played though. Always played. Mike didn't play for a lot of years. I always uh, I was always playing. Right. Yeah, I did a few years afterwards. Afterwards, yeah. and uh, then the, the work was starting to dry up. Yeah, you know, it was everywhere, and especially for a drummer, right? Yeah. Um, I remember at some point um, the clubs just started uh, getting rid of live acts, and they started going with guitar player on a stool singing. Singles and acts, duos. Yeah. And and the guitar players loved it, <laughs> you know. Yeah. But, but everybody else was left out. It's like, the what call. the hell? Especially drummers, so, right? So yeah, and and they, all um, the drummers got replaced by a guy named Chip. Exactly. <laughs> that sucked. <laughs> exactly. And so I mean, I, I I saw the writing on the wall there for and and unless you wanted to get into a, a road band, I mean, but I was I was going to do that. I, I wasn't prepared to do that. So I went to uh, I went to do what you do in Windsor. You go work in the factory. Yeah, right. You go work at. You go work at Chrysler, Chrysler Corporation. Great. Yeah. And, yeah my uh, uncle worked at the GM, at the, the big GM manufacturer. Here in town? Yeah. No, no kidding. The trim yeah. plant. Probably. Yeah. Yeah. They're all gone now, most of them, right? Right. Most, yeah. most of these, uh, yeah, these car companies have pulled out. I think we got the last one standing. And, uh, well, it's now it's called Stellantis. So we're still still in there plugging, but uh, yeah. Right. Right on. So I'm sorry. I'm just checking out. There's so many questions here. I'm not, probably not going to get to them all. But um, Barb is wanting to know if there if there will be any new music or any if if there's new songs in the process. Or Marco will say yes. I'll say no. <laughs> <laughs> go ahead. Right. If you'd like to say yes, go ahead. <clears throat> Excuse me. I think we'll have to take uh, some kind of national poll and, and sway Mike over to the. Yeah, yeah. We need to write some new. <laughs> to the dark side, Mike. <laughs> uh firstly i would like to record a live record of the show we're doing right now to kind of uh, <laughs> introduce reintroduce people to what we're doing and I had an idea maybe to record the shows in europe and then the shows yeah. in canada and put out a vinyl record on all our our best material that we're doing in a show and then maybe that would be the catalyst for a new record but we've been trying to decide whether people want to hear new music you know, lots of times when I would go see bands in the old days, you know, I'd want to go see their old stuff, singing their Absolutely. old stuff, their hits. And then they start playing their new stuff and they try to shove it down your throat. And it would kind of make you mad, you know. I don't want to hear that, you know. But I don't want to, I don't want to stop there, right? You got to, we have to write it. We have to hear it. And then we can decide whether, you know, we, we think sure. it's worthy or holds up to the old stuff or whether people. And I don't want to shove it down anybody's throats, but. I think that's what we signed up for in the beginning. We all were, you know, we all wanted to be musicians and part of that is writing and, you know, and there's nothing to be scared about that. And right now we're hesitant. So I think the live record would be good for the band. I think that's a great idea. I think, I think, <clears throat> what do you think, Mike? You think that's I a good idea? Well, what do you think? Do you, do you, um, are, you interested, are you interested in new music from old bands? Um, you know, here's I'm a, not. here's an, I'm going to probably have a lot of people pissed off at me if I say this, mm -hmm. but the truth is I kind of get what you're saying and I agree with it. I, for example, yeah. I am so looking forward to going to see Harlequin in Toronto in Prism and Honeymoon Suite on, on the weekend. Mm -hmm. I don't want to necessarily hear any new songs if I'm being honest. Yeah. I think, I think that's, I hate to say that. I, I hate no, to I say that. I think that's honest. I think, I think, I think that's a general, I, I kind of go by what other people say and i kind of yeah. look around check out the, the temperature of the room and see what other people are saying and i don't i haven't seen any real interest in in, in that in a lot of cases that shouldn't stop a group from writing new material i mean you know, doing a live show and understanding trying to you know what they want to see and and you can appreciate that and we would always do that but we should still try and you know look at the other avenue you know, not just <laughs> he's pitching, he's pitching hard, isn't he? Look at him, look at him, he's pitching, he's, 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 just, he's throwing, yeah. himself, throwing himself on the mercy of the court. I think here. the band's got a lot to offer, and, and the band is, uh, I think you know, like I said, back in the day, we were we didn't even hit our stride. Mike and I started writing good songs together, yeah. What and, are we gonna uh, write about now, Marco? What are you gonna write about now? Uh, <laughs> Uh, All right, time for a comment. I know. <laughs> this isn't gonna Instead be the of fragile rock, person. we'll call it fragile. <laughs> rock. What? Is that no? <laughs> fragile rock. <laughs> fragile rock. Because we're old. I don't know. Yeah, uh, so, uh, Frank Cummings is just saying a lot. I'm not sure. Frank, baby. You know Frank? 
Of oh, course. Yeah. Frank used to hang out with us in Montreal when we used to start when we started recording at the first studio. Uh, what was it name? Tempo. Oh. And we had the rehearsal hall in the back, and and Frank became part of the uh, local uh, crowd that would hang out with Tease with Yogi Sloan. Yeah. <laughs> it was crazy. And we used to play, uh, I don't know, we used to bunch up duct tape and play hockey or something with Walter Rossi. <laughs> wow. yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah here here he is. And then Frank Marino was working on one of his Panteras. You know, they'd bring his car in. and It was great, man. Wow, I loved yeah. it. Yeah. Oh, you're, you guys have a lot of friends in the house. And Mike, uh, here's a question. I'm going to ask you this. So he wants sure. to know, what, what was your favorite tune from One Night Stands? Oh, my favorite tune from One Night Stands? Hmm. Oh, it's got to be Heartless World. I mean, I think it's I think it's the best song, maybe we did, of of all time. That'd be my favorite. Yeah, personally, yeah. I think Is that the album favorite. that Miles Goodwin produced? Yes. Yes. Yeah. Right. Yeah. 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 And, and that one, that one's been in movies. Uh, yeah, that that song just uh, kind of has a life of its own on people. It was covered by um, a Vancouver metal group called uh, Unleash the Archers. I don't know if you've heard of them. I, they, I have not. They've won the Juno a couple of years ago, I think. Is that right? For best yeah. uh, metal album. Or something. They're fantastic. These I'll have music, to check that out. Oh, Female they, singer. Britney Unleash Slater. the Archers. Write really? it down. Unleash the Archers. They're fantastic. I mean, how can they play? Check them out. And they're, they're all over Unleash the world. The yeah, but they're in that heavy metal, metal genre, right? And they're really, they're really quite successful at it. But yeah, if you do, you know, we, we listen to what we listen to, so we might not be exposed to them. But they, they covered Heartless World. And did, a, did an excellent job on it. Really good job. But I think that, yeah, I think that'd be my favorite song for sure. Marco, what would be your favorite song? Back to, well, that's really, that's no, you my took favorite. Too, you took too long to answer. That's Next my question. favorite record. Next question. Every song. It's a you great have to answer album. quickly. You have to answer quickly. Although the album yeah. even got greater when Rock Candy Records in Europe put it out and they took off for me what was uh, uh, Loose Change. And they put on Stay Here. And uh, wow, what a record. Holds up today. I think I think, uh, I think. if Miles Goodwin would have produced Body Shots, that was another changer. I don't think we'd be uh, sitting here today worrying about, you know, how many people knew us because we would have been, we would have went through the stratosphere, I believe. Is that right? Yeah. So, yeah, sometimes. You when know, it stands. It's frustrating when, when it's, because it's certainly not for lack of talent. It's certainly not because of that. No, yeah, and there's so many things, you know. Maybe, maybe right. a little bit. Maybe a little lack of time. Mike, that is not true. But Harvest World is... Don't make me come well, over there, Mike, because I will. <laughs> we, lived, we lived on this farm really far out of Montreal, in Ormstown, and, and they put us on, because I don't think they wanted us to hang out with the downtown crowd in Montreal and get some <laughs> bad ideas. And uh, we used to sit on this farm, and I'd play my guitar, and I would just blow licks, and and, and, and I was playing that Heartless World lick probably because of the, I don't know, you know, the, the Spinal Tap movie. And the guy was saying D minor is the saddest key in the world. So I started playing it. And Kozak walks by the bedroom and says, hey, what is that? Save that lick. Okay, <laughs> and that's how Heartless World started. And, uh, Funny how inspiration great. can just come from the, sometimes the most unlikely of places, hey? Well, he would just noodle around. He would throw stuff out. He wouldn't even, he would just play something. Yeah. So I would have to kind of stand outside. The room and listen <laughs> and if i if i heard something i thought we could use then i would burst into the room and i'd say keep it's that it. hang keep on that. to that one yeah sometimes sometimes you would have to camp out yeah. <laughs> in the doghouse <laughs> yeah because we were learning like i said we were learning we didn't we weren't uh like natural songwriters or anything we were figuring it out on the go and that was one of the great things about working with miles because miles is obviously songwriter fantastic. extraordinary and he he really showed us a lot. He took some of our, our demos and stuff like that and says, okay, nice. that, that stays, that goes, blah, blah, blah. He did some arranging and he did some stuff and, and he really, he really, he really brought out a lot of those, those tunes on that record. And he could, just, he just actually got inducted into the Songwriters Hall of Fame. Can you yeah. believe that after all these years? Sorry. It cut well deserved. Well deserved and about freaking time. Like how many, uh, how many hit songs do you have to write before I'm you not, qualify? If you ask me, I don't think he did quite enough. I think. Um, <laughs> I think he good one, Mike. Yeah, he's a bit of a slacker in the songwriting department. I'd say I'd say two, three songs away. And then he would he would have gotten in. <laughs> he was yeah, close. Yeah, like, he was close. Hundred or so, like I know, right? <laughs> yeah. 
<laughs> no, it was great. Right was, Good one. And, Love it. and uh, who was the other guy? Somebody else. Uh, who else just got in? Somebody else who I can't believe took that long to get in. Oh, they dragged their heels. Those guys, eh? They really. Dragged their heels. <laughs> Yeah, what do you have to do? You know, you got to be a death's door to get in. Who do you got to know? Right? I was going to yeah. say something naughty. Okay, you got to say, who do you have to know? You got to be <laughs> gotta write 500 great songs and be at death's door. And then we might yeah, consider much, right? you yeah. <laughs> yeah, it was, it's kind of weird. There was another one. I couldn't believe what it was, too. I don't know. Could have been like a Bill Henderson, someone like that from Chilliwack. Does that sound right? Possibly, yeah. Yeah, Actually, well, but, is getting into the Canadian rock of fame. There's a well, lot they, of yeah, well, yeah, yeah, they should be a part. They should, well, yeah, yeah. But I think, yeah, it was another songwriter. It was it was crazy that, that it took that long. I just great. I know. I don't. Yeah, it's. I, I don't understand how that process works. And oh, you know who's in the house? Claudia. Oh, <laughs> yeah, she is. Claudia. Claudia Santiago. She's like, hola, amigos. There she right is. On. Right on. Claudia is the bomb too, man. She is Please. right. She is actually performing at Cornstalk too. Oh wow. Man. Sure, her band is yeah, yep, Fantastic. is uh, is opening up. So yeah, that's going to be quite the show. Um, You're going to see some footage on that. You okay. know, or maybe you don't know me. There will be so much footage, and there will be thousands <laughs> of pictures. It'll be a day long project for me just to uh, go cool. through it. Yeah, yeah, great. I'm looking forward. Where is yeah. Claudia? Where is Tabor, Alberta? Tabor so. is about thirty kilometers outside of Lethbridge. Okay, all right. I'm not sure if it's northeast or because I'm a girl and I don't, my brain doesn't work. <laughs> it's left <laughs> or right. <laughs> Whenever someone says to me, yeah, I go here and then turn south, I'm like, is that left or right? <laughs> yeah, that sounds like it's going to be something. At the I risk of sounding stupid, I just made myself sound stupid. I'm not stupid. But yeah, the, the, it's 30 That's kilometers it. away from Lethbridge. <laughs> that sounds like it's going to be fun. That's going to be Yeah, really and yeah, and there's uh, there's eight local artists, some from Calgary, that are coming out. So it's going to be just a whole weekend full of nonstop music. And nice. It's, yeah, it's going to be. Uh, and so Ken Holst, you know, big shout out to him. That's the biggest show of its kind. Tabor's a tiny little town. Mm -hmm. Known for its corn. Have you ever heard of Tabor corn? Well, corn stock. I figured, <laughs> I figured there was a connection. Yeah, they're, they're like world famous. Their corn, it sounds kind of corny. <laughs> See what I did there? <laughs> See, heat stroke. <laughs> but uh, yeah, corny joke. But uh, no, they're they're actually very well known for their corn. It's, oh, it's, it's a thing. Fun. It's a thing. So a couple of people are okay. also wanting to know if you are going to do a show in Montreal. Oh, They're wanting you to come to Montreal. And there were a few we, people I mentioned that. It's ridiculous that we haven't been there yet. That, that I've been beating that Montreal door for a while. Yeah. I, I just, it, it's, Pat, I don't know why. I don't know why. I have no <laughs> answers for that. I. That's where we should be. Yeah. I, I think you got some fans. There's a couple places. people tonight that, that are from there that would love to see us. So just good to know. Well, oh. Yeah, and which it's just we've been out, we've been away so long from there, and I think a lot of our uh, the industry people that we knew there aren't in the industry anymore. <laughs> they've yeah, all, well, yeah, they've well, all they've well. all retired, and so it's hard to just call somebody and say, "Okay, where where can we go?" A lot of them aren't doing it anymore. They're uh, and they were they were major major people in the business. They are they're not doing it anymore. Great, get up, get Uncle Bernie to get Uncle Bernie to put yeah. I think I think our approach so far is with the, with the festival situation is that we feel pretty comfortable that way because uh, yeah. because of the forty three years and, and and you know we were kind of feeling we just want to be part of a scene and and there's really not a lot of pressure on us to you know sell tickets we're just part of this whole thing right. and, and and it's a building thing and people are starting to see us and uh, so I can see that just not sure how many sense. people we would draw in Montreal. You know, you, you, you yeah, get, yeah. We, we, I mean, yeah. I'd hate to get you know get a night like the Corona Theater is beautiful, probably holds like fifteen hundred people, which sounds doable. But then all of a oh. sudden, if you got seventy people, I'm not sure. But you have fans <laughs> in Europe. I'm thinking he must have a lot of fans in in Montreal. Frank is saying that he misses you here. Is is he from Montreal? Yes. Yeah. Yes. So Frank was yeah. saying that. And, oh and yeah. Brian, no. Brian was well, commenting that he wishes he was here because we're having so much fun. He's sad that he's not here. <laughs> <laughs> I seen I seen a band Sword was playing again. Then they were on our they were they were later on the same label we were on Aquarius Records. And I know they're a much heavier band. And then I thought, wow, you know, we should maybe be opening for a band like that. Like one of these bands could uh, you know, have us on the show because we really there is talk right now. I've been talking to Louie again, Mike, about uh, Montreal, and there's there's a chance maybe in 2024 going to the West Island and playing this. Uh, I can't remember what it was called, but I'm working on it constantly. 
Yeah, yeah. I, we will get there eventually. Yeah, I mean, yeah it's, it's, for sure. It's, yeah, we, we have to. Um, but yeah, like you said, it's just a question of getting out and playing just as much as we can. Right. And so you know, I guess my question would be, in a perfect world, where do you see yourself in five years? <laughs> no, that's right a, that's stiff as a board. That's a good answer. That's a good answer. <laughs> I love when people give me that answer because it's it's bad when somebody says, "Oh my God, I hope my life isn't like this in five years." It's good. <laughs> You're in a good place in life when you when you just hope for more of it. Oh, you know? oh. You know? <laughs> are you doing this on purpose? Oh, I bet my. he is. Look, he's really yeah. <laughs> he, he don't have any? Uh, yeah, nothing will be. Uh, I can't be disappointed at this point. It's already, it's already, if it's, we don't, if we stop doing it tomorrow, then I'm good. It was great. Yeah. So much fun. Yeah. I mean, just to still, you know, to, you know, I think that just the, the fact of like having, having, I'm assuming it was a goal or a dream of most musicians. It is from a young age. So, you know, I think, I mean, how do you, what do you call success? You know what I mean? To me, success is doing what you love to do and, and doing it for 40 plus years or returning to it. You know, that's, yeah. that's, that's huge success to me. Yeah, you know what I mean. That's it. Yeah, it's a, it's really how you. Uh, yeah, it's your own perception of it, right? It's, Absolutely. It's what, yeah. Well, yeah. If you, uh, uh, yeah, man, if you put the bar at you know uh, twenty million dollars and living in L.A. or something like that, well, you may never be successful. But you know, right, that's happy. fleeting. That's all fleeting stuff. But you know, it's right. like, it's like the whole concept of the difference between joy and happiness. Like, you know, happiness is fleeting. It's you know, if I. If I buy a new outfit, I'm happy for five minutes, right? Or if I eat a big pizza, I'm happy for yeah. five minutes. If I go see live music, I'm happy. But the joy is that being where you're supposed to be in life and being happy with it. You know, that's the well, difference. Right? Exactly. Well, you know what? I would say when we were kids, nobody in our town ever had any dreams of making a record. We never thought, we never thought you're never going to make a record. And then right. we, we, yeah. we got to make a record. And that was talk about hearing your song on the radio i'll tell you right? the biggest thrill it's the first time you're holding that, that record in your hand and it's got the shrink wrap on it and you're yeah. looking at it and it's that's our record that's that's thrilling that's absolutely thrilling absolutely. So right there yeah, right there i think well i'm done i'm successful <laughs> this is all we ever really hoped we could ever do we never thought we could ever amount to anything let alone make a record so, so and did you ever think yeah. you would get back together like did you ever think that no. this would happen no way so absolutely no <laughs> I had a feeling you might, Mark. No, I had a feeling that you would say that. I did. I had a plan. No, I never did. I honestly, I gave up on it many years ago. I just thought Brian yeah. was never going to want to do it again. He, right. he just seemed like he was, uh, you know, I call him every so often, you know, just kind of feel him out, you know. I always just wanted to do one one, one day, right? One, get back together, do one. Just one, one more night. time. I just have yeah, that feeling yeah. one more time. Just yeah. do a reunion thing and then, you know, that, that, that'd be that. But I even gave up on that. And yeah, you know, you never say never, but I, I kind of was at that point where I thought it's never going to happen. Not because I didn't want to or, you know, Marco didn't want to. I just thought Brian was never going to really be into doing it. And now I think he's uh, he's probably more into it than anybody. I think he's Is enjoying right? it. I think he's good. enjoying it as much as anybody. Yeah, really having a good time. Good yeah. Stuff. So, yeah, it was. It was. That's. I still, yeah, shake my head sometimes. But, you know, I think, man, we actually pulled this off, you know. Yeah, you I, did. I yeah, was, you uh, did. I was resigned to uh, never playing again, never even, never even doing it. Right. You know? And so, and so, are there are there upcoming dates that we should know about? Or yeah, BC, uh, August eleventh cool. at uh, Prince George Rock the. What is it? Rock the North, Caribou Rock the North. Oh, okay. cool. And, and then uh, two days later, Cranbrook. And I think that's a new festival, Rock the Kootenays. Kootenays. <laughs> right. Kootenays. Yeah, I saw yeah. that. And I think we have pretty much the same lineup both shows. I think it's us and Streetheart and Honeymoon Suite. Is it April Wine? April Wine's on the second one. April Wine. So the second one is us, Streetheart, Honeymoon Suite, and April Wine. So that's okay. That's right, thought. Because I've heard these names just recently, and it just dawned on me it was from last week when they were on the show. They're talking about the Kootenay one. I think it was. Yeah, and this those was, are yeah. gonna be those are gonna be fun. Those are gonna be fun festivals, eh? That's what's well, for us. Fun. Yeah, for us yeah. especially because we uh we opened for both those bands on tours. Right, right for Street Heart, we toured a lot with Street Heart. We toured a lot with April Wine. So it's kind of it's kind of uh, cool you know, to uh, to be able to to do it and open for them again. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. And then and then we're gonna head back to Belgium. Yeah, and, we're going to Belgium. Yeah, and we get to play with Ten Years After, which is we no talk way. about one of, one of our mentors. That's a bucket list thing, man. I'm like, wow, really? It's hard to just yeah. It's hard to 
Great. That oh, is about yeah. awesome. Well, you guys are coming back in a big way. It's like we're not going to Moose Jaw, Saskatchewan. We're going to Sweden and then we're going to Belgium. We want to go to Moose Jaw. <laughs> oh, you can? I want to go Jaw. back to Moose Jaw. I used to play Mike and I were talking then. the other day and we talked a little earlier, but why why don't more Canadian bands go to Europe? They they ask for them all the time. Is that not, right? I, yeah. You know, all all the bands that we're playing with in the Rock the Kootenays and Caribou Rocks the North. You know, I know Saga's there a lot. Yeah. Or Saga or whatever, you know. And, yeah, Saga's always in Europe. But, and, yeah, and I'm sure, you oh, know, yeah. they, all, they all played Sweden Rocks. They all played the one gig. But I know Tony Hatch just did Sweden Rocks this year. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. he said that. Yeah, so they went. And um, uh, Helix is going to Germany, I think, next month. Summer That's Festival. Right. That's yeah, right. they're doing something. Uh, yeah. yeah, but I mean, there's a real appetite for Canadian groups over there. Well, that's good to know. That makes my heart happy. But they're not oh, being yeah. satisfied, Kelly. That appetite's not being satisfied. <laughs> <laughs> I think it's time we feed some of these bands to the Europeans. I think so. On a silver platter. I do. Yeah, I think absolutely. So too. No, like, like birds. We, we put the Canadian bands in their mouth and we just spit it in their mouth. <laughs> <laughs> great yeah. visual. There's a great analogy. Yeah, I know. It wasn't, it wasn't, so, oh, just for the record, Fabi Boucher, she's a great guy, Fabi. She's a good fan of the show, a friend of mine. She's agreeing with us with the new music. She's saying, us old dogs don't want new tunes. Yeah. And yeah, I, I would I would kind of agree with her on that. So I, think I, just it, I, think, I think for a band to do it, you're doing it for yourself. I think you... You do it because you want to do it and you want to yeah, just you want to expand or, or throw it out there but i mean i i don't know i just uh i think throw the odd one like maybe yeah one. i think that's what i was thinking okay but, if we come up with something yeah. that kind of you know, just throw it out there and just okay here you have it if you like but um yeah mark I, disagrees i, I, I think mark's disagreeing. no because <laughs> the live, like, again the live application yeah people you know you probably might not ever play these tunes on stage it's not like i would we would do a new record and say well we got to go back it and because it's really you know doesn't make a difference Really? Here was my idea. Here was my idea. Uh, we had a couple, we had a couple tunes laying around from back then, that right. were never finished. So to me, that would that would be one thing to maybe do because they're from, they're from that era. They're from '79, right? So if you got a song, and it was never released, so let's just finish it now and then put it out. That's For our. Sure, that's a great because idea. Because it, it's not new, per se. I mean, it's just it's just finished. We're just finishing it. We had, we, had, we had a couple like that that we could uh, maybe just, you know, just get out, you know, sort of a, uh, as a museum piece, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> From the archives. <laughs> yes, here you go. We're dusting this one off and shining it up for you. Wow. Uh, right yeah, that, that, that might be fun to do, you know? Yeah, something like awesome. that. Awesome, good stuff. You know what, you guys, it has been an absolute blast. I'm, I'm sorry done? the other half of the band didn't come. I am too. Uh, we are winding down, but I'm glad that you guys were here because you both had lots to say, and it was it was interesting. And I really appreciate how honest you were about everything. Do we have time uh, for my cook? Do we have time for my cooking segment? <laughs> <laughs> Maybe Mark wants to pawn a few items. A few oh yeah! Items. I was going to bring the uh, computer up to the kitchen and uh, throw together a tuna casserole. <laughs> you know, get out. Tuna, tuna casserole. The whole family can enjoy. <laughs> you know, get out some diamonds and moissanites, and uh, we'll show some jewelry. <laughs> That's right. Right on. Well, I got to say, I'm certainly glad I ran into you. Oh, we that's too at Kelly. the hotel at Rock the River, and then we got a chance to meet and and. I, I knew you before. I knew you before we met because I've seen I've seen your uh, the the show. Oh, times thank you. Before yeah. I I yeah I'd seen some of the interviews before, and uh, the, the, I just saw the one uh, with Todd Kearns. A oh yeah, weeks ago. love Todd. Yeah guy's great you know how proud yeah. are you as a canadian i mean you're so you know i'm proud just, as a saskatchewan he's from saskatchewan I'm i know from saskatchewan, wow. and it's just, it just feels so, Vegas and it just feels so good for guys like that you know that they're they're like really they're in the game they're, they're and they're humble like they're just they're yeah. so humble. they're as blown away by it as we are do you yeah, know what i mean and, yeah and super yeah just a, just a cool super guys guy. yeah but you know yeah. what i find all the canadian artists like everybody i've had on my show has been like gracious and humble and I'm just so proud of you guys. I'm proud of our Canadian artists, and I'm yeah, and I'm yeah, proud to have true. you guys back on. And is this the first interview you've done since you've come back? Or oh uh, no, we've done, we've done uh, a oh good, couple, we've done a couple. Done a podcast. Uh, nice. Um, yeah, we've done yeah, we've done a couple here and there. Um, trying to think of them all. Not that John many, Baldwin. to be honest. John Baldwin. Yeah, yeah, John Baldwin, and uh, and um, our friend there from uh, oh jeez. I'm blanking on his name. That's all good. That's good. I was just, I was just curious, and so Mitch it's Lafon? No, 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 not Mitch. I did one with Mitch years ago, you know, but um, 
Right on. So, uh, but I just, anyway. I want to let fans know where they can find your upcoming shows. Um, is there a website? Is it, is there a, you know, oh, here's a funny fact. I, I generally always add a website at the bottom. And so I, I started typing in T's as I was just getting information and you would not believe the interesting sites that come up with that name. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so all of a sudden it's like, problem. Naked bodies all over my laptop, just pop oh, every you know, tease. It's like, oh my god, it's tease with a Z, it's tease with a Z. Like, <laughs> like, uh, yeah, all these different, and now I'm pretty sure I'm going to be getting a ton of spam in that nature. Oh my god, <laughs> I, I just went tease. Never thought of it like, that I, way. Okay. <laughs> it's like, what? I was getting a bit of an education in more ways than one. <laughs> no, we just have the Facebook page, we don't have a oh, website hey, as, enough, as of now. Enough. We you might know you people know. go to Facebook more than websites anyway. I swear well, to we should get around to making one one time. But, <laughs> but as you can see, with only two or four members here, we're not too good with the technology. So that might be, you know what? That might be kind of tough where, to get a, get a website. Facebook out. is where it's at. You know, I'll tell you something. I have a YouTube channel, and yes, I, I and and you know what? Almost nobody watches the shows on the YouTube. Everyone watches on Facebook. So you're, yeah. you're, you're yeah. good with Facebook. That's fine. So there you go, guys. If you're happy to be lucky enough to live in BC or you're up for some road trips, check out the Facebook uh, page to find out yeah. where Tease is playing at a locale near you. Thanks, thanks Kelly. Yeah, thank you guys so much for taking the time. It was, oh, it was no so problem. Thank you so and much then, for having us. And yeah, we'll do it again awesome. in a year. We'll do it again in a year. So. And, and say hello to Claudia for us. <laughs> Claudia and Lisa. Us. Hi, Lisa. Hi, Claudia. <laughs> Lovely ladies, eh? I'll be yes. seeing them all this summer, so I will definitely say hello. So, okay. Yeah. Thank we'll you see guys. you soon. Are we going to see you at one of these shows, Noah? You're busy. Not in BC. I, I am going okay. to walk the river in Saskatoon and oh yeah, and then Cornstalk, and I think that'll be it for my gallivanting for the summer because I got work to do. <laughs> yeah. Well, we'll see you soon. <laughs> Absolutely. You stay safe. Stay healthy. And you thank you. Well. Thank you, dear. Thank you. Thank, thank you, you very guys much. So much. Okay. Thank Bye, thank everybody. You. Bye, everybody. I just want to thank the viewers for tuning in tonight and uh, I love you guys so much and, and take uh, stay tuned next week because Sean Kelly will be here. Uh, oh. We'll be talking about his new book, Don't Call It Hair Metal, and he and uh, Coney Hatch's new album. So, of course, he plays with Coney Hatch and Lee Aaron and Nelly Furtado. So that's next Sunday. We'll see you then. Have a great week. And until we see you then, take care. Be nice. Stay safe and safe. Bye, Bye everybody. Bye-bye. See you guys. Bye-bye.